Yeah, like Street Fighter Five onward. Uh, I, I'll say. Okay, so who's um, new in Street Fighter Five that isn't just DLC? President Man, who became you, is really fucking cool. G. G. Yeah. He has the single coolest fucking walk animation ever. Oh my god. You're gonna piss off everyone at once. You're gonna make your game sell negative coffee. It'll be worth it for the meme. Bring back Fung. Oh god. <laughs> Fung is the poison man that flies uh yeah. like that flies like a goose. Yeah, he basically got replaced by that poison girl from Street Fighter Stick. Aki. Yeah. I like Fung. I think fuck it, uh, Fung is hysterical. I think he's stupid too, but he yeah, it's very it's very goofy, but man. Something something, maybe racism because he's coded to be obviously Chinese. Maybe. Yeah. Uh. Uh, his his very ironically, considering uh, his theme, yes, he is uh, very toxic to play at, as and against from what I'm told. <laughs> So this is the stage that plays Ooh, yeah. the most into the ninja mechanics, which is you have a very high jump and you can glide. And so I might end up retrying things because I'm probably going to fuck up those jumps a couple of times. But this is the one that the stage that plays most into the actual ninja mechanics. Mm, cool. The revision of Mitsunari stage. And the context of this stage is Saratobi is uh, personally handing the letter to Mitsunari. Uh, saying, hey, uh, we of the Takeda would like to formally uh, be, uh, begin an alliance with you in order to take down the Eastern Army. It's really occurring to me more and more that this is basically like the fill oh, filling in a lot of the background. Damn, that's a fucking good skybox. MT Framework Light. Holy shit. This game was also still released on the Wii. Four wasn't, but this game was. So, just to reiterate to everyone, this is the... This is a a lesser, slightly lesser version of the MT framework the engine that Devil May Cry 4 was running on. And you've seen the cutscenes for 4. I yeah. Hope. Not you, the audience. And Resident Evil 5 and 6. Yeah. Yeah. For, even for as... Okay, even for as shit as RE6 was, sometimes, like, at least it, it's still a little pretty, pretty good graphically in the PS3. Like, you, you could convince me that was a PS4 game. But yeah, this is a lesser version of that game engine. I'm convinced you could get this running on the Vita, no problem. Yeah, right. So yeah, this is the non-Naruto traditional ninja thing you sort of expect from a anime-ish thing where you're running around at night on rooftops. Yeah. I, I don't know why I wasn't expecting that to be 60 FPS. I know, right? Weird. Oh, uh, it just kind of hit me really fast. I think the in-game cutscenes are also uh, 60. That'd be nice. God, I'm really curious to actually check out the PS3 version of uh, War sometime. See if uh, that was actually uh, still running 60 or if they were doing the thing that because the game is cross-gen, we have to make the PS3 version worse in any way we can in order to guide people towards the PS4 version. Or just be, still being hamstrung by not just the PS3, but also not having the access to the actual full power of it, so, yeah. Well, uh, Sumeragi was released on both in the 2015? Yeah. Oh god, I'd have to, I almost want to check out what Yukimura Den looks like on PS3, because that released late 2016 as the PS3 and PS4 game. Oh my! <laughs> that is a thought. Japan was releasing PS3 games still on PS3 as late as like 2017 or 18. Huh. So here's the thing, if people don't know this, Japan is very, very slow to abandon any any of their tech or anything yep. for a long time. That's why you, you will still hear uh, stories even now about how there are a lot of Japanese offices, government especially, that still use fax and still require you to uh, send paperwork through snail mail instead of email. American VA system, is that you? This is way worse than that. Well, they only recently switched away from paper. And it's like, in Japan, there's a lot of documents that you cannot sign your name with. You need a stamp. Oh my god. They have what's called a honko stamp, which is uh, a stamp that just that's just a stamp of your name that you're supposed to carry in your pocket at all times if you need to sign documents. Huh. Because... Your name can be forged on paper. They can't forge your stamp. Like, 
You sure you can't just... Are you sure about that? You sure you can't just order a stamp that has a name on it from, like, Amazon or a company or something that yeah. makes them? Yeah. That, that sounds like it's actually very easy to uh, plagiarize. Damn uh, it. Also, you might be able to be careful. Sasuke's taking some damage. Yeah. Uh, can I get back up? Okay, yes. Not completely fucked it yet. The red areas are showing up on the map are areas that you can only access with uh, the ninja characters. If you were to play this as anyone aside from uh, Kasuga, Kotaro, or um, Sasuke, you'd be stuck to the white paths only, which means you will actually miss a lot of substantial content from this. Game. So is there anything specific about them that actually allows them to do this? It, they have uh, they have the glide. Ah, okay. Uh. Also, not gonna lie, the, the gliding seems faster than most people's runs. Holy shit. Yes. And they also jump higher. Yeah. It almost looks like you have like a double jump with them. Ooh. Got the fugitive. Nice. Right. So this is a thing that I never mentioned in 3, because uh, it never comes up. There's a thing in 3 and 4 called uh, the fugitive mechanic, where in some stages you can find a character hiding like in a corner somewhere, and if you beat them and in 3, they're really hard, they have really high defense. You get a bonus to your uh, to your character's stats, and if you and in four you fail out a bingo book, you get a general uh, increase to your stats across the board for all characters. Hmm. Hello. Wasn't expecting to see you here in this literal pit. Yeah, well, I guess a pit kind of fits the whole theme, but you know, he's just a slave here. Apparently, they're literally keeping him in a dungeon. Hmm. And the handcuffs Ooh. that make me win. Something fierce. Okay. I got an additional one for you that wasn't actually listed on Wikipedia. Hmm. Uh, God Hand. It, yeah, that was still Capcom, technically. Th yeah, I know. That, that, that took me by surprise, too. And yeah, absolutely. God Hand needs way more love out there in the world. Fucking great game ahead of its time. I'm because they didn't become platinum yet. They were still a clover. Oh, hey, a wild Richard F. car appeared. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I was going to mention that, too, but I'm glad you spotted it first. Platinum is really funny because, uh, or I guess clover at the time, because their deal is Capcom was like, hey, you can make anything you want so long as it makes money. And then they proceeded to release like four games that never made any money, but they wanted to keep doing their own thing. Capcom was like, no, you're not making money. So they went indie and then proceeded to make like five games or eight games in a row that still never made them any money. And the only two that ever did was um, Metal Gear because it was Metal Gear and Nier because it was Nier. And none of Platinum's own games have ever made any money ever. So it's no wonder that they're always either doing uh, collab games or always on the, facing the threat of bankruptcy. Are we talking about Platinum or Clover? Clover is uh, platinum before they took on the name platinum. Oh, the okay. Game. Yeah, yeah. They uh, um, well, they have had some pretty decent selling stuff before. That's the thing. But a lot of their stuff, like it seems like they stretch themselves way too thin sometimes. With but the thing is, um, they really haven't. Like, no, you to none of their games have ever actually sold above a million, and most of them much less than half a million, unless they've had someone else's backing. And to that extent, it doesn't really count. Met uh, Metal Gear Rising sold because it was a Metal Gear game, not yeah. because it was a Platinum game. And Nier sold because it was Yoko Taro, not because it was a Platinum game. Yeah. Well, I'm not necessarily just saying that. Also, the fact that... And that's not to discredit the gameplay, mind you. It's just that's not the selling point for those series that are already long and ongoing already. Yeah. Uh, hell, I didn't even know that Nier was made by fucking Platinum for a while anyway. A Nier but Automata specific. Yeah, I know. No, um... For them, they, they're, they're, I think we have covered them in depth before with uh, Boss Wars 3, funny enough. Yeah, but no, about it before. like after 2010, like they were taking on like three games a year, seemingly, until recently with Star Fox, where it actually did start to slow down afterwards, as, as anyone would. I'm not unconvinced that the failure of Star Fox Zero was it zero? Yes. Yeah. I'm not convinced that the failure of that game is actually what led to. Uh, Nintendo realizing that maybe there isn't a feature for the Wii U tablet. Well, but that game was released in 2016. So that was the game that actually uh, it generated the Miyamoto quote that people uh, like to put over pictures of him all the time. The delayed game? Yeah, a bad, a, bad, a bad game is bad forever. A delayed game is eventually good. 
that was what uh, what generated that, which is extremely funny, especially given was today's climate. For like 2014, it didn't release until 2016. Yeah. So with that being the death knell of the tablet doesn't really mean much of anything, considering it was already released in the Dead Zone. Yeah. And the Dead Zone for the Wii U started in like 20. 15. I definitely like to think that's probably more so um, reaffirmation than anything else. Yeah. Oh, no, that's right, Shitty. That too. Uh, Shingen can also do the thing where he charges up his boss meter, but for him, it cost him his life. It cost him his health bar. Huh. Interesting. Right, I need to hold that. I was going to say, I do remember him having charge moves that do substantially change him a bit. I just needed something with a little more help so I didn't die. Yeah, true. But yeah, no, they did all the collab games too. The only one that's remotely well received was the Transformers game. And even then, I think yeah, that's that didn't generally seen amazingly. as like a six. Whereas all the other ones are seen as like a Four out of ten, if lucky. I think Fall of Cybertron was like a seven out of ten uh, in terms of being over reception. But the problem is also during that time span of the PS3, like they also did the Avatar game, uh, Korra. They did that. Uh, they also did the they did uh, the, uh, the Ninja Turtles game. They did the well, that's more recent, but also uh, no, that hard. was in like 2015. Oh lord. Yeah, no, that was one of the earlier ones they did. That fell incredibly hard in space. I think in general, they're just stretched way too thin sometimes, and <laughs> I think the criticism that's levied against uh, the Soul series actually applies way more to your Platinum games, funny enough, with reusing the, the same formula a lot. Yeah. But more so with them, I feel that they also just don't have the budget for it either sometimes. That's also the thing. Yeah. Like, unless they're on someone else's dime, they don't really have the money to make anything. Yeah, Platinum's A-Team, like, the, the guys that work on Melga Rising, Bayonetta and stuff, like, those guys can do some good stuff. It's the B-Team, like, with the, oh, the that, side stuff. that That's what really suffers, unfortunately. And that's the other thing that not a, a lot of people realize. Bayonetta's a recognizable character, but Bayonetta has also never sold ever either. That's why uh, Sega abandoned them after uh, Bayonetta 1. And, um it didn't sell on the Wii U and apparently from what I heard the Bayonetta 1 and 2 collection on Switch that released like a year into the Switch's life cycle that sold even worse than the Wii U versions. That's interesting. Yeah the Switch that everyone already had and was in love with at the time apparently did worse and people sort of like 1 and 2 people hate Bayonetta 3 so I have to really wonder what its numbers look like. You said 3 right? Yeah. Yeah, the I, one that came I, out la a year, uh, like last year, I think. Uh, 2022. 2022. I think. Yeah, that was a that was the. I'm I'm going roughly off of the hell and the controversy. Hang on, I'm looking this up. Oh wow, yeah. Yeah. Bayonetta one on the PS3 and Steam combined sold 1.35 million. Yeah. Bayonetta. Oh no. Bayonetta 2 on the Wii U sold 280,000 units according to VG Tart. Yeah. Oh my god. And then the Switch version sold like 1.24 million. Now that must have been way after the fact then because the numbers were reported on real early that it was, that the collection was a failure. So that must be life extended lifetime sales. Yeah. Uh, Bayonetta 3 did sell for a million, I guess, but 1.07. Yeah, that's not Nothing great. Nothing on the Origins game. <laughs> that's... That game was never going to sell because it was uh, an expansion of a spinoff mode in Bayonetta 3 and released for $60. And people have uh, found out recently that... What's his name? Platinum Man? Oh, Kamiya. Kamiya. That he is as in as insane as... Uh, is Yu Suzuki his name? The Shenmue Man? I don't know. Oh, it might be. Yeah, I think, I think that's uh, Yu Suzuki. Um... The guy, I'll block all of you, yeah. The guy that's like, yeah, uh, Shenmue is going to be a, is going to be a an eighteen game epic. Apparently, it came out that um, Kamiya wanted uh, Bayonetta to be like a nine game series. Like that is not going to happen in any world. While it is a neat original IP you developed, I don't think it has you know, that kind of staying power. And apparently, three, which 
if you don't know the story, the story of that game is that it destroys the entire series and leaves nothing usable in its wake. Oh, goody. It's like, yeah, that was just going to be a footnote in this longer story. Like, that is not how that works. Yeah. For context, I have played and beat Bayonetta 1 while I was much younger, but I've never had the incentive of them at all to play 2. Yeah. And while I wouldn't... Parried on the first hit. Nice. And while I wouldn't mind that at all, it's like, what are my options, really? I could try playing on the Wii U, which sucks. Switch. I could try playing on the Switch, but the performance becomes more of an issue by the day, although I imagine that would probably... The Switch right. performance for 1 and 2 is fine, because those are PS3 games ported to Switch. Yeah. Whereas Bayonetta 3 is trying to be a PS4 game. Yeah, Mayo Nena 2 never came to the theme, unfortunately. Never did 3, but 1 did, luckily. That's because, and he, some people still don't get this, that those games are literally owned by Nintendo. Yeah. I, can you believe all the controversy back in the day and how fucking stupid people are? They're like, Cap, uh, Platinum, you sold us out. We played your game on PS3 or on 360. Why aren't you putting it on... The Xbox One or the PS4. Well, apparently not enough of you idiots played it. It's like, no, no you didn't. But also, this game literally would not exist without Nintendo. Nintendo was funding it, so of course we're going to be exclusive to Nintendo. Also, I think Bayonetta and wanted... They, and they still bitched after the fact saying, well, I don't care. It should still be on the other thing. Also, I think Bayonetta 1 also one of those games that actually ran worse on the PS3. Than the yes, it did. It ran at like 30. Or worse. Yeah. And the 360 wasn't great either because it's still a 7th gen console, so it was still running a game maybe at 50 if you were lucky. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, all of that was a clone. We never left the very first tower. Oh, where did I make it go? Was, was this? This is 2011. No, this might have been before that plot detail on art, though. Or no, this might have been after it. This would have been after. Yeah, that, the, that, whole, the whole footnote that uh, clones that respond to Naruto so actually return their experiences to the user upon being uh, popped. Yeah, that retaining information thing would have been like 2007. No, that was like 2010 or so, no, or 9. No, because 2010 in the anime was the pain fight. That, w that well, I was still came, watching at the time. That came about... Uh, in the training up to heat on Kakuzu, so yeah, so yeah. that would have been 2008 in the anime, 2005 like, yeah. in the manga, 2008, 2009, roughly. Yeah, right, yeah, because I think it's 2010 that Itachi died, and that's why I started reading the manga. Yeah, it's like I, I was uh, still watching at that point, like end of 2009, beginning of 2010 is Jiraiya fight with Pain. Yeah. So actually, uh, can I take a really fast minute uh, for a break? I need to run to the bathroom, and yeah, I, I need to uh, free weasel so they can play downstairs and so don't bitch at me. Yeah, no problem. Well, well this is done three whole characters straight, so be back in a minute, boys. Yeah. 